Hello everybody, welcome to the construction of a crib and changing table. Now, when I realized I was going to be having a child, I would be damned as a woodworker if I was going to purchase some off-the-shelf, poorly made, expensive, plastic, nonsense crib, or some particle board, ground-up newspapers, changing table. Uh, more than anything, this project was a labor of love, and I'm very thankful to my wife for continuing to push me to get it done amid of many other projects that were paying me. But, you know, when, when there's a baby on the way, you gotta do what you gotta do. So this project goes back actually years and years and years because when I first got into woodworking, I was of the mind that, you know, any, any tree is precious, every piece of wood is amazing, you know, you gotta have it all. Which, to some degree, I still believe that. But I've become a little more discerning when it comes to milling wood and what to save and what to, you know, buck up for firewood, etc. So, my stepdad has a sawmill. And when my wife and I were driving through uh, the city back east, I saw this massive tree that had fallen or been cut down in someone's yard. And I pulled, pulled a U-turn, went up to the guy's front door and said, Hey, I saw you have a tree down. Can I take it away? And he didn't seem to mind. I think he was going to have to pay some money to get rid of it or the city was going to come by. So it wasn't, it wasn't anything to him. So a couple weeks later, I guess, we loaded it up, brought it up to my mother's house and eventually milled it and it started the drying process and it sat at my mother's house and then it sat at my Baltimore shop amid all sorts of adventures and going to Japan and coming back to Colorado um, just sat there and finally I got all my tools and my gear and I kind of consolidated my shop once again and hauled all this wood back and figured hey this will be great full circle. I milled the tree and now I can make crib and changing table for my child. And this wood was silver maple. Urban log. So it was not the clearest maple, but it has character. I mean, when I started the project, I was more of the mind like, all right, I'm going to make this crib pretty quickly. I have lots of other projects to do, but I can't make anything quickly. And so what started out as project that I would kind of crush out from this, from the wood that I had, sort of snowballed into the types of builds that I do all the time, which is, you know, I'm going to put a lot of care into selecting the wood and the grain orientation and getting good hardware and, you know, paying attention to all the details and putting a lot of design thought into it. So, you know, it is what it is. So the design for this crib and changing table are sort of inspired by the Japanese tansu, where you have lots of little drawers, and I got some antique hardware uh, from original tansus and used that for the, the drawer poles. This project also kind of forced me to set up two tools that uh, I thought were really important to have to increase my productivity, so one of them which you've seen already is the table saw sled that basically turns the table saw into a large sliding crosscut table saw, which is really helpful for making the mortise and tenon um, shoulder cuts. And the other tool is the very dangerous looking but completely safe um, tenoning machine, which cuts the cheeks of the tenons very rapidly. Um, so I use these two pieces of furniture as kind of a way to force me to make these tools. And then I could have these tools for future projects and it would increase my productivity. So let's talk about the process that I use to make these two pieces of furniture, which can be generalized to 
lots of different types of furniture and small tweaks and adjustments and little flourishes could change the style considerably. So this is basically a frame and panel um, as opposed to a solid wood construction where you would create large planks of wood and join them with dovetails or something like that, case construction. So uh, I designed all this in CAD as I do for most of my projects, uh, created a, a framework and those are all joined together with mortise and tenon and then the spaces between the frames are filled in with either solid wood panels or the drawers where they belong or in the case of the changing table the back has a lot of little tongue and groove uh, wood panels because I just didn't have enough wood to do solid panels and I thought it would be a nice little detail uh, for the back so <laughs> there's a pretty big difference between this piece of furniture and something from that big blue store where you just kind of tack on some sort of particle board uh, it looks a little nicer the major advantage that I see in using this style of construction for furniture is that it can really mitigate expansion and contraction of wood through che seasonal changes in humidity and why is that? So notice that all the joinery is is along the ends of these members. So wood is very unlikely to move in the direction of the grain, basically how the tree grew. It'll expand, um, you know, it'll get thick, uh, a board would get thicker or would move in width, but as far as lengthening in the direction of the grain, it doesn't really happen that much. So uh, as long as you leave sufficient depth in the grooves that hold the panels because the panels are going to move a little bit the frame itself is going to be very stable because all the lengths of your pieces are unlikely to change another advantage that i was surprised is that it makes for quite a uh, light piece not very heavy you imagine this framework and then very thin panels between the frames and the whole thing just i was surprised i was able to carry the the whole thing uh, the whole changing table without drawers up this up flight of stairs there's no problem um whereas I, I would imagine if solid wood panels there's a quite more volume of wood in there so it made for a, a light but strong frame if i can offer some advice to other woodworkers especially if you're starting out um Right now, you're watching me have a very good time. And the reason I'm having a good time is because I took a lot of care in the planning and milling and preparation of the stock and the layout. It's very much a delayed gratification situation. Um, the, the best part of this project is the assembly because you get to see what's been in your head and on paper come together. And the assembly can be a crisis, a nerve-wracking, insane disaster, or it can be a methodical, pleasurable experience. And so the advice is take the time, double check, make sure everything's square. Any small errors at the beginning will be multiplied throughout the whole project. And so uh, maybe if you've seen how the, the proportion of all the footage in this video is, so much time was spent milling and prepping the stock and that is so that when it comes time to assembly everything just goes together like a kit and being able to compartmentalize each stage of the project makes for a more enjoyable woodworking experience because you don't have to remember any kind of corrections or or weird things that maybe you you did did wrong earlier that you need to compensate for during assembly or whatever like that you just have a kit and you put it together the silver maple that i had milled for this project was pretty rough it had a lot of defects and in some cases i just allowed them to show through and highlighted them where i could and in other cases i wanted a lot more calm grain like the drawer faces or some of the panels and so finding those good pieces within all the stock really used up all the silver maple. Um, 
maybe I thought at one point I could get all the drawers out of the same uh, material, but it was pretty evident early on that that was not going to happen. And so I got some uh, vertical grain cedar, which I don't think it was officially vertical grain, but it was very clear. And that is what I used for all the inside drawer uh, parts. So they're uh, western red cedar drawers with uh, an aromatic cedar tongue and groove drawer bottoms. And that's really imparts a nice aroma to whatever you put inside these drawers. And uh, nothing fancy, actually. They just, I just put the drawers together with biscuits and glue. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I was rushing to get this, all, both of these pieces of furniture done in time for the baby to be born. And then the baby was a week late and I finished up a little bit ahead of schedule. So perhaps I could have spent more time making these drawers a little nicer. But I, uh, I, I don't feel it was necessary to completely go crazy on dovetails for all these drawers. Some of the details that are hard to get across in the video are, are very small, subtle things that you only see when you look at the piece. So all the top parts of the crib have a very slight curve to them. And there's little chamfers and little tapered chamfers where I used a spoke shave to almost make a curve along the edge of the vertical pieces. And all these little chamfers and little curves serve to visually lighten the piece. Um, and it's not something that you can really identify immediately. You look at a piece that doesn't have any chamfers for, you know, for example, the crib verticals, and uh, it just, it looks sort of heavy, but then once it's chamfered or once there's little tapers, the whole piece becomes lighter, even with the same mass of material, same strength. As I mentioned earlier, I ordered some antique iron tansu drawer pulls from a, an antique dealer in New York. And those really kind of brought it home for me. I, I thought the contrast with this dark, nearly black uh, hardware against the really light colored maple uh, looked pretty snazzy. All the components of the crib and changing table received a coat of tongue oil finish and some paste wax, nothing crazy. And uh, I, was, I was impressed with how much just the variations in grain provided all the visual interest that I wanted in the pieces. So it's, uh, it's all the same wood. I mean, there's some different woods inside the, the drawers and the cabinets, but on the exterior, it's just maple. But between the wavy grains on the panels knotty parts on the verticals and the calmer consistent grain across the drawer faces uh, it, it, it's quite interesting to look at and as it has aged even in a couple weeks now um, I can see the direction it's going to be headed where the, the what was very white almost after milling has calmed down and turned almost golden so there it is finished changing table and the crib which was very much enjoyed by its new resident so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time thanks everybody for watching if you found this content helpful please consider supporting never stop building the easiest way to do that is to simply hit that red subscribe button and click the bell to get notified of new videos and content that I release. If you really want to be my best buddy, become a Patreon subscriber where you can get plans to all these projects, uh, exclusive content, and much more. So check the description below for a link to that. And as always, never stop building.